G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel as we inch closer to the 2024 preseason. In today's video, I'm going to be discussing which players from each AFL club is going to have a player that has a breakout year. And it's important to contextualize that by saying that a breakout season could mean different things for different players, right? So in some cases, I'm talking about a player who has gone from being maybe a fringe player to becoming a genuine best 22 player. Perhaps it's a player that is known pretty much only to that club sets of fans. It probably gets more of a profile. In other cases, it will be a player that genuinely jumps into the elite category. So essentially, we're just talking about players that will take their game to a next level, whatever that level may be. Now, before I get into the video, guys, if you could do me a favor and take two seconds to subscribe, to the channel i've discovered that over half 55 percent of the people that have been watching my videos through the month of january haven't actually subscribed to the channel so if you are enjoying the content it would mean a lot to me if you did subscribe but without further ado let's start talking about players that i think will have a breakout year in 2024 we're going to go through it in alphabetical order starting with the adelaide crows now i've picked riley philthorpe to start off this video and riley philthorpe was picked two in the 2020 draft just after jamara yugel hagen and his Played a pretty solid apprenticeship up to this point. He's played 46 games, kicked 44 goals. Doesn't quite have the same goal output as some of those other key forwards in that draft class. But when you factor in that he has been playing second ruck, uh, then that number makes a little bit more sense. And he's getting about five and a half hit outs a game. I do think that not only is he at a maturity level, like a physical maturity level, where he could start to really bump up his output, we're also about to see a transition, I think, a baton change, if you will, in Adelaide's forward 50. And I think this could be the year right Philthorpe becomes a genuinely consistent goal kicking forward ruck. For the Brisbane Lions, the player that I have breaking out is Kitty Coleman. Now, that might not seem like a very bold statement. Now, Kitty Coleman's last game was probably his best game at AFL level. He was outstanding in the grand final. When you look at his output last year, 17 disposals a game, but a solid efficiency of 73%. I think when you look at the way he finished the year, it's easy to make the claim that he is probably going to improve on that 17 disposal average big time in 2023. As a side note, I think he's probably a good fantasy option for that reason because his output really started to escalate towards the end of the year and I think he will take his game to the next level in 2024. For Carlton, I think that player is going to be Jesse Motlop, the small forward who has just turned 20 years old. So it's a very young guy, top 20 draft pick from my memory, maybe a little bit later than that, but 33 games so far and he's kicked 36 goals. I think to be averaging more than a goal a game in your first 30 odd games as a young guy, like I said, only just finished his teenage years. 24 goals from 21 this year, like that output is solid. He's also a pretty good tackler inside 50 as well. So his defensive pressures there, he's balanced. I think he's actually a pretty good aerial player to some extent, consider he's only 180 centimeters, good at ground level. I think he's very well-rounded. And I just get the sense that Jesse Motlop will be a good small forward in time. And I think we'll see a big increase this year when you consider Carlton are probably gonna be in the thick of things as well. Now, picking a breakout star for Collingwood is tough. There was three that came to mind. Um, I decided to probably put aside Ash Johnson and Finley McRae because I do think that's a little bit saturated almost. And I want to talk about Reef McInnes because I do think this guy potentially is getting slept on a little bit uh, when you consider that Collingwood do need a key forward target to some extent this year. Well, they definitely do. And the choice between McInnes and Johnson will be an interesting battle. And I would just like to throw some spotlight, I suppose, on Reef McInnes because I think his profile is actually quite impressive. I think he's one of the leading goal kickers in the VFL last year, 32 from 15 and at 194 centimeters as well, is the sort of height where he could at least add something structurally to Collingwood there. I know Johnson has that as well, but the fact that Reef McInnes just turned 21 has some midfield potential. I think this is the year we at least see him in the side. And as far as I'm concerned, when I think he's played like 11 games or something like that, that would be considered a bit of a breakout. If Reef McInnes can come in and contribute to a premiership quality side, I think that's a big step up. Now we're up to Essendon, and I had a few choices for this one. We got a lot of play players sort of like pre-prime, if that makes sense. But I actually wanted to throw Jai Caldwell into this discussion because he's uh, he's about 23 years of age, former high draft pick, pick 11, I want to say, to GWS, something around the mark. And uh, about 18 and a half disposals a game and half a goal a game. So that output there, I think, kind of belies what his actual quality is. And I think... Maybe he hasn't been that consistent, but when I've seen Jai Caldwell play well, I've seen him really play well. And at the age of 23, he probably is at that maturity level to take his game to the next level. What I'd also like to see is him spend maybe more time proportionately at stoppages rather than mostly as a half forward. Um, maybe the introduction of Gresham into this side allows him a little bit more freedom to play up the ground. In fact, he's a bit more physically mature. I think he has a lot more to offer than necessarily what the stats suggest. 
And I think he's also a key player for Essendon, potentially improving big time in 2024. Next, we got Fremantle. And uh, again, I'm covering old ground a little bit because I've talked about this guy already. But I think the obvious answer here is Hayden Young. I did also consider Heath Chapman. But Hayden Young will be a breakout player in the sense that, yes, his output is already good at AFL level, but we are going to see him in a new role. I think he had the last five weeks of 2023 as, you know, at times a run with midfielder and at times, you know, just a genuine on baller. Uh, and his best performance had 29 touches and 10 tackles against the Brisbane Lions and adds something different in terms of uh, attribute point of view to what Fremantle have in that midfield. And I think he's definitely going to be a player to watch. And if he becomes a genuine midfielder, then I think that really elevates his profile across the AFL landscape. Then we've got the Cats. And then there's a few options here, but I'm going to talk about Max Holmes because I feel like there's something bubbling away under the surface here for Max Holmes. He uh, you know, was drafted, picked 20 a few years ago. I think he's played three seasons at the level and had some incremental improvement, predominantly as a wingman and constantly heralded for more midfield time. But I think this might be the year that that happens uh, as he enters his fourth year, coming off a season where he had 19 touches a game, three clearances. I think we could see more increased time in that engine room for Max Holmes. And like I said, with Geelong's list in the state that it is probably more looking to a midfield of Tanner Bruin, Jai Clark potentially down the line, I think Max Holmes, this might be the year we see a bump in improvement. Now we've got the Gold Coast Suns, another club where it was hard to just pick one, but I've actually gone with Ben Ainsworth this time. This is possibly a little bit controversial just because he is about 26 years old or about to turn 26. So he's a bit more mature than some of the breakout players I've got on this, on this list. But one thing I'll note that he is also potentially earmarked for a move down the ground. And specifically, I mean more from a high half forward, genuine forward to being maybe more of a wingman. I feel like he's actually a little bit underrated in terms of his output. I think he went at a goal a game last year, which is pretty good for a bit of a high half forward. About 17 touches. And I think if he's got a proven ability to hit the scoreboard if he starts winning close to the like 23 24 disposals a game then his profile will increase so you know there's a few options there but Ben Ainsworth is the one I'm keeping my eye on next we got the GWS football club and I think this candidate is fairly obvious in Finn Callahan, who was a top three pick back in 2021 and by extension is less than 21 years of age he hasn't turned 21 yet so when you factor that in plus an output of 21 games last year at an average of 21 disposals a game at efficiency of about 76 the numbers are already there and yet from a physical and a developmental point of view like there's still some room for growth I do think the upside of Finn Callahan is really high five score involvements a game last year as well as really solid numbers for a guy nowhere near the top end of his potential and I think this might be the year we see a big increase in performance from Finn Callahan Next, we've got the Hawks, a team full of young players and potential stars. But I'm going to t talk about a guy who I think this year will make the transition from merely a good player with some potential to a genuine A grader of the comp. And that's Mitch Lewis, because this guy has put some really good output together over the last couple of years and hasn't played more than 15 games in a season uh, for a while, if ever. I can't remember off the top of my head. But 37 from 15 last year, that's goals. 36 the year before. 73 goals across 30 games is very, very strong output for a guy, again, that hasn't reached his full potential yet. Nearly six marks a game last year. The output is there. It's just about getting through a whole season. And if he does, I think we're talking at least all Australian squad of 40, potentially better. I think Mitch Lewis could transcend into that next level of performance in 2024. For the Melbourne Football Club, I've gone with Trent Rivers, and you could probably highlight him as a player that kind of already had a breakout year and uh, has had pretty good continual improvement since he started. But one of my other pieces of logic here is that he is another player heralded for some more midfield time. Averaged about 20 touches a game last year, four rebound 50s. is a good running carry sort of player. But I, I did find on the, I was actually reading it on a fantasy web Website that when in games where he spent more than 10% of his time at uh, center bounce attendances, his output just skyrocketed. And I just think there's potential there for Trent Rivers to really elevate his game with more midfield time in 2024. Hey guys, just want to briefly interrupt this video to talk to you about a message from our sponsor, Druzy's Athlete Academy. Now, a lot of you probably know Druzy through collaborations on this channel and me appearing on his channel, but not all of you may be aware that Druzy is actually a fully qualified strength and conditioning coach. So if you're a young male or female athlete wanting to take your footy game to the next level with preseason just around the corner, you guys should be aware that Druzy does have a preseason SNC bundle available. Where Druzy, as a fully qualified SNC coach, like I said, can help transform your game in 12 weeks. An AFL specific gym program and an AFL specific running program. And throughout, you'll receive personalized coaching, which can include advice as well around nutrition and recovery. 
So if you're someone who wants to take a more dedicated and I guess professional approach to your footy, Druzy's offering his pre-season AFL bundle at $39.99 a week for that 12-week program. But be aware that if you use the code TRUEFOOTY20 at checkout, you get 20% off. So like I said, if you're serious about your footy, it's time to invest in yourself and don't forget to use the discount for 20% off. Now we've got North Melbourne, and, and generally as a trend of this video, I haven't been going for the ultra young players. So George Wardlaw here might be the youngest player on this list, I'm not sure. But the reason I isolate him is because I do think his potential second season could be that good that he does constitute being a genuine breakout player that young. He only played the eight games at AFL level last year, about 14 and a half disposals a game. But like I've said in previous videos, he's so tenacious, so explosive, and just so damaging in general. And if he puts 20 plus games together in 2024, then I think he's going to make a big ripple around the AFL scene. For the Port Adelaide Football Club, I'm going to go with Mitch Georgiatis. Now, he's a bit of a forgotten player because he did his ACL. And after a couple of really good seasons, I felt at AFL level, probably had a little bit of a dip in output. Back in 2021, he kicked 32 goals from 21 games, which I think was his second season at the level. Now, he's coming off an ACL. Who knows exactly how he's going to come back? But you factor in as well a Port Adelaide forward line that is probably going to oversee a little bit of a transition too. Guys like Finn Layson, but in particular Charlie Dixon, will probably be on the way out. Finn Layson's probably got some time left, but I do think Georgiatis uh, has the potential to really push his way into this team. And possibly, I think his upper end of potential is like, you know, 50 goal a season forward. Maybe not this year, but at some point, I think we could see that level of output from Georgiatis as that kind of medium dynamic forward. And I think if we did see a 40 plus goal season from Georgiatis, that would absolutely constitute a breakout season. Let's talk about the Richmond Football Club, who, um, you know, a lot of their young players in particular are a little bit hard to get a read on because they haven't been super exposed. But one that stands out to me is Josh Gibkus, who was picked nine in the 2021 draft, played 18 games in his first season, showed some really good signs, only two have his next year ruined by injury. So another player coming off a long injury layoff. But really like this kid's attributes. I expect him to play, especially from what I've been told by Richmond fans in the comments and stuff like that, as I've been working through each team this off season. But great intercept player, plays with a great intensity, does the one percenters, great mark too, and potentially has some forward line utility too. So I think he has the potential to come in and I suppose take his game to the next level. I think that's probably a bit of a given when you've had that much time off. But that being said, I think he could make a little bit of a mark at AFL level in 2024. So for St. Kilda, I've gone with Machito Owens. And again, another player that kind of broke out already, but uh, there's some reasoning as to why I think his output could increase again in 2024. So context, Third in the Rising Star this year, fantastic player, 26 goals from 23 games is kind of like a crash and bash sort of athletic third tall forward almost, like an undersized key forward at times. But I think where the improvement and elevation from Machado Owens could come from is if he starts to play as a dynamic midfielder. And I do think St. Kilda's midfield probably does lack a punch and they're going to rely on these younger guys like Owens, Philippu, Wilson, etc. There's more than that to come in and really shake things up. And I think Owens is top of the queue for that. I would love to see him play some more midfield time in 2024. Not exclusively, play him as an as a impact forward as well. But I do think this guy has the tools to be a genuine A grader. And I think that might happen sooner rather than later. Next, we're gonna go for the Sydney Swans. And again, I know this is repetitive, but I really do think the obvious answer here is Logan McDonald. He's a key position forward entering his fourth season. We're also now in the true post-Buddy era. I know that Buddy missed a lot of football, but his output has continually increased. He kicked 32 from 20 last year, and I think as a third year key forward, that's that's very, very respectable. It was a big jump up from the previous year. He had 15 goals from 17. I think when you compare that output to, say, Jamari Ewell Hagen to a Riley Thilthorpe, other guys that went early in that particular draft of a similar position, he's tracking really well. And I do think he has the tools and the talent to probably kick a 45 goal season next year. And that's I would consider that a fairly sizable breakout. Next, we've got the West Coast Eagles, and I am going to ignore the fact that we've got a lot of young players, you know, there's a Ruben Jimby, etc., like that, who could take their game to the next level. So I'm going to throw a left field one at you to, to avoid getting too repetitive. Jack Petrocelli. Now, this one is a bit of a long shot. I understand that. But through the, the mess that was 2023, I felt like Jack Petrocelli really stood out at times as a player who's clearly physically matured in a big way. And now the output isn't very outstanding. 12 touches a game, half a goal a game last year, or more than half a goal a game, playing kind of every position on the ground. And I, what I would like to see from Petch is him getting a clearly defined role. I think he's going to probably get more time at stoppages. And I honestly think, and I am a harsh critic of Eagles players as much as I am a devoted supporter, I think what we saw from him in pockets last year was enough to make me to go, ooh, 
there's a chance that he actually becomes a good AFL player. So of all the options there with a young talent, I'm going to back in a mid-aged player in Petrocelli to really take his game to the next level with more continued time in the midfield. And finally, for the Western Bulldogs, I think this option is obvious in Jamara Yugel Hagen. Sure, you could point to some of the young talent as well. I think they're a little bit raw. I, I tried to avoid talking about 18-year-old first-year players in this video. So when you look at the broader picture there, Jamara Yugel Hagen is the obvious answer. And I really do think he, along with a Mitch Lewis in particular in this video, are players that could really elevate to elite status as early as next year. Like I said, the output is similar to, to say Logan McDonald, 35 goals from 23 games last year. But I think what we've seen from pockets for Jamara is that he can kind of blow a game apart. We saw multiple bags of five last year, a bag of four. I think the year before that, he kicked a bag of five. I remember a ripping goal against Melbourne. I just think he has more game-breaking ability than most on this list so far. And I do think that next year is not too early for him. So 50 goals plus I'm forecasting for Jamara. Any more than that would be explosive. Anyway, guys, that is my take on 18 players, one from every club, who will take their game to the next level in 2024. Obviously, this is a broad sort of concept, so there's gonna be a lot of players that I left out of this video, and there were players that I found it very tough or changed last minute. So let me know in the comments, anyone that you A, disagree with, but B, you think should have been in this video, or what is worth mentioning as well. But for now, I thank you for watching, I thank you for being subscribed, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.